call the meeting to order. Do we have anybody on the phone listening? Hearing none. First on the agenda, are there any changes or additions, Dan? Yes, please. I'm sorry, good afternoon. Um, we can delete Fraser Road Portland Driveway. Um, I don't have that application yet. Oh, yeah, we saw that. Um, to add um, some of our recreation programs. Yep. Um, add retirement for Kevin plant being shed. Yep. And then uh, Jerry Ogden gave us a bid for some kind of waste stand that we have down at the highway department. Yep. And then uh, I just like to talk just like what about plants to reopen or bring staff back, you know. Yeah. Is that it? That's it. Okay. All right. Next, approve the minutes. The motion to approve. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Community concerns. Do you want to say something, Buckley? Okay. I'll wait till we're all back. Okay. Liquor control. We do have liquor control, don't we? Make a motion yeah. we want to let the control board. Second. I have a motion and a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? So pass. We have one applicant, Bliss Wright Pizza Company, Inc., DBA Hoagies, first and third. You heard there's any issues, Richard? No issues. Okay. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion to approve and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Any motion to come out or the board? I have a motion to come out. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. New business. Let's do the summer rec. All right. We, of course, everybody knows we. Let me grab Sarah. She wanted to be a part okay, of it. Okay, yep. Hi, Sarah. Hi. So we've been running a summer preparation program for a number of years. Um, right now, it's, it's staffed by mostly what I call high school kids and college kids and occasional adults. I talked to Christine Castro this morning. I think we have a lot of concerns that we're not going to be able to use the safety guidelines to run that summer recreation program this year. The other problem is we don't really know if we're going to be able to you know, they haven't given us an answer, a very answer. Um, I'm kind of recommending, and I thought we could about it this morning, but we can't that program. Oh, we, got that. Um, I think I we, we can do the adequate safety training and precautions uh, to protect the, the people there. Like, I'd rather see the board do something with it now rather than later get an opportunity to do <laughs> How soon was that set to start? Uh, second June, week of June? Third, June 20 something. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I suspected anyway. Yeah. Uh, I haven't seen guidelines yet. You know, we're not. Christy, of course, isn't going to be able to get there full time. So, really, I mean, it's only ran good for what we thought. But I think this year things have changed dramatically more than that. So, we'll play devil's advocate. If we continue to go, if the fair is shut down for the summer, I mean, if Wednesday night, or Tuesday night live, Wednesday night live, and all these concert series are shut down, but daycares are open. Daycares are open with, with what's going to be a great number of restrictions. Understood. I see us, I'm not sure when Ronnie's going to return to work full time. Okay. Kevin's going to retire. Yeah. And if our kids don't have something to do this summer, those fellows are going to be really busy. Yeah. So, 
So I'm concerned about completely shutting it down without exploring perhaps even a partial program that could be structured such that we can only do our best to provide safe environments for our own families that will mind our community. And I just really hate to see us close up shop. Yeah, yeah, I think I can play devil's advocate for you first. Yeah, please do. I, 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 mean, I, mean, I, mean, I mean, think I'm going to turn my brother in the back. I think for what we've done up there, you know, safety wise, we've made a lot of advances, but we also have the third degree, you know, teenage supervisors and kids, and then the health restrictions that are in place for us. I think, I think there's a liability on the app to the town, too. I, I think it's negative for us. I just don't know if you get on this right now because the school is going to have to use that space. So that's my really concern is the whole safety aspect. And then if I find a way to make the board feel comfortable safely, I will do that. Um, but it's, it's just one of those things that that, that part of it, I think I have responsibility to do. I think we're not going to do so. I am torn. I um, I think we need to be proactive and make a decision sooner than later. From what I understand, the governor is not going to set up the guidelines for June first. That's only giving two to three weeks to put it in place um, and hire people. I feel like you know I don't. I feel like it's a huge thing for our community to lose, and I think that a lot of our families depend on it. I don't think they're pricing the affordability of our program. There's nowhere else close to what we are. So I can see it being a real hardship for families not to run it. That being said, I don't know if we can safely run it how we run it in the past. If something were to happen, I think it needs to be creatively um, looked completely outside of the box. I think we can't necessarily be a bunch of high schoolers that are running it. We can't guarantee that we have the school. I don't know. Uh, is Elmore an option open? It's, I feel like there needs to be, it needs to be staffed by responsible adults that's really going to oversee it and not necessarily volunteer. That, that's just my big concern. And I don't know which is the better way to go. But I don't think we can wait till June 1st or June to make decisions. But maybe we could do a little exploring and see what's possible, make a decision in a week or two, you know. I don't even know if people know or not what's possible. Well, people are wondering. What's Christy's uh, take on Christy, about Christy Day, she didn't think we could do it. She didn't think. No, when I talk to her, she's been, as a person that's been a parent of a kid that was in rec, if you're not going to do it, you should tell them sooner rather than later because it's going to be hard for them to find a place anyway. But if you wait another two weeks, that's really not all that fair to the parents either. Well, I, I'm thinking that most parents are already thinking it's not going to be one. Well, I've had tons of people ask me. Yeah, a lot of people have paid. Yeah, people have paid. We're going to have to refund a whole bunch yeah. of people. So people are thinking that it's still going to go, I think. Not the people I talk to. Oh, well, maybe. Well, my thoughts are that I don't think we can run it the way it is. So we should tell them no now. If you want to look into starting a different one, maybe less stuff with better quality help, we can look into that. But the way it is now, I think it makes sense to not run it. Why don't we, let's make them think out loud how they're going to do so. If we had adults that were staffing it <clears throat> and we were going to raise the rates to reflect that increase in cost, because obviously we can't do it at the cost that we're doing it now, all right, that's just not reasonable. If we could find adults that were going to staff it, we can put the, the applications on hold. If we can find a tall staff staff at you with some teenage help, but you know, you know a tall staff and see if we could do that, I think that would be an essential way to make it work. But I think there has to be a plan.
plan. A plan to do that. Um, and I think it's something that we can come up with. And I, like I said, I don't think Christy wants to do it. So it's going to be a big change in how we staff it, how we do it, if we do that. And then there's still the question of where will we be able to do that. Well, that's the next thing, too. I, I forgot that part of it. But again, we may not even have a place to do it. So it may not even be a chance to do it anyway. But something to look into, but maybe for now, tell them no so that they can plan in case there is not one. And maybe there'll be whoever's got this problem might say, well, I'll help. And they'll jump in and maybe you can come up with something later on. But I don't think we could do it if it's not going to work. <coughs> you and I call Christy Mark. How much money does the town contribute to this? How much is that? The town contributes $20,000. Well, that money would not be used. That's right. It wouldn't be used. It would sit in the recreation fund for another year. I'm wondering like, what River Rex is going to do in the, the rec center. Yeah. I'm wondering if there's some kind of hybrid that could be put together. I'm not interested in organizing it. But like Could you do it? The guidelines today are 10 people in a room or a classroom or whatever. Um, so I don't know if some, like River Arts, that's typically what their their sizes are. It may not be financially feasible to do it at all. You know what I mean? If you can, can only have 10 kids, you have to have two or three people walk it, you know, or you need to find a place where there's more than one. Um, Classroom where you can have groups of kids in different areas. Yeah, yeah. It's worth looking into, but yeah, it doesn't sound good. I would certainly tell people it doesn't look like we're going to be able to do it, but we're working on possible options. Yeah. And it may need to be capped too. I don't know. Typically, we get a lot of people from other towns that work here. Yeah. About how many kids participate? Yeah, Over 100. At every day, not necessarily every day, but 60 to 80. A lot. All right. Next. One, one other question. Do you think Christy, if the if a hybrid plan was put together, an alternative plan, she'd be interested in overseeing it? I don't think it didn't sound like it. Didn't sound like it. Okay. She's got her own kids and. That's her biggest concern is that she doesn't have an adult director on staff. And in the past, she's gone and volunteered and is there all the time. And she can't be there to be the adult there. Okay. Next, we want to do uh, the two retirements. Kevin LaPlante, as Dean said. Richard, you want to talk about Kevin? Yeah, Kevin was first in Kansas over five years ago. He had some uh, retirement. And before that, of course, he did some fish and wildlife for the state of Massachusetts. He was co chair before that. So. He told me once I hired him that he used to do about five years and that's when he got it out. So yeah. it's, I think it's probably as much of all this is going on. He waited purposely. Uh, Ronnie would be back for that time. So yep. And uh, yeah, and he was retired. Okay. Do we hear a motion? Make a motion to accept. Make a motion to accept. Okay. Yeah, we have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Herbal Dean Shed. No. I <laughs> <laughs> Second. <laughs> I haven't talked to him. You talked to him? I have. It was the first I heard of it. <clears throat> I'll be there. 
Yeah, I knew he had, but I didn't know he had a date. Uh, I will be able to lower it. So you want to make a motion for that? I make a motion to begrudgingly accept Earl Dean Shebb's retirement vote. Second. I have a With motion. Thank you. With our <laughs> gracious by Hubert, he does. Almost 24 years. Yeah. 24. He's the one on the. I know. He's the one on the bucket loader going to Tom Buckley. Him? No. He's good. There was been one of our. Nobody can run that ball ball like like Dean. He's been very very good. Very conscientious. What kind of loader, right? Yeah. He thought you twenty thousand dollars for a shot. Oh, that's gonna. I cost my father a lot of money over the construction. <laughs> well, I know why it happened. I know one of them was running at a high rate, high gear, and a snow pusher. You cannot do that a loader. You're going to run the second gear over. No burn, no burn in transmission right now. I know it's a class. That's for pickup, too, but people don't know it. All right, I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Okay, we'll do Jerry Audis too. He's of course he's getting uh, silky yeah, pants. Between two to three hundred yards, stand full silk out by the garage. We can't use it for anything. I wouldn't normally come to the board and recommend that we sell anything like this, but in this particular case, we're going to have to haul it off somewhere. Jerry has a use for it. We don't. Uh, in this particular case, either we're hauling it off and getting rid of it someplace or we sell it to Jerry, but I have all off and use it someplace. Um, so it just it makes a little cost effective sense for the town to do it. But between two and three hundred yards and six dollars a yard, like I said, it's silky sand. We don't have to use for it all. Do you have to take it out of there all at once, or is this going to be an ongoing process? I think he's taking it all at once. Yeah. Taking it across the road, probably. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> so. All right, do you hear a motion? Make a motion to approve it. Six dollars a yard. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. Dan, you want to talk about your plans to reopen? Sure. Um, you know, just really like what the governor said, because everybody what the governor had to say either. Um it can't make sense to be still slow and it's not gonna be
other says or doesn't say, right. it's pretty comfortable that we can bring people back up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that sounds good. It sounds to me like it's going to be 15th, you know, they're going to maybe even loosen restrictions on the 10 people rule, but we'll see. Yeah, right. and, you know, we, we are set up much better than we were a month ago here. Yeah. Um, we still lack the, the barriers, the protective barriers in the first office, um, but I think we're in a better position than we were set up before. I don't see anything. We've got any concerns that I need to address. It's plain as well. The one thing that comes to mind is that the public has, has more access to the flow that your folks are able to disinfect throughout the day. I don't know if that means that yeah, they have a more rigorous cleaning schedule with the pen and keys. That's the one thing that we can't do. So we're going to, the team is going to go buy some spray bottles and some, we'll get some bleach and have that as a double paper towel as far as some of the wipe down areas with. I mean, you know, I have to pull our spikes at home. I thought if we have a small supply of those, we've been able to get the hand sanitizer, we've been able to get you know, the face masks you have are okay, but they're hard to use in an office environment where you're just in an house we bought some different ones that you have yours. So, you just, so, so that you can keep down, you know, if you're in your office and hold up when you need to it it make it a lot easier. It's a buff, yeah. yeah. So that you can, it'll make it easier for the staff to do that and keep it protected when you're moving them around. But we can, you know, keep my office door shut. And use
So they can go back to the 50 and get that online. And then if it's past that, they just send me an email. They call and um, we, we can get it for them. Okay, so do you guys want to make a motion? Uh, about Matt, face covering all of that. Okay, yeah, I'll make a motion that um, starting Monday. When we or when we begin to when we, uh, when we open the public. When we open to the public, that it's a requirement that uh, anyone entering the building uh, wear a mask while they're here in the building. Second. Is there any further discussion? How long? No, no, oh, until until they get the restrictions. Yeah, I just well, when we're so making this a motion, I mean, was this a lifetime now from now on? Well, I think it's, it's until further notice. Okay. Yeah. I, I I think we'll get more guidance from the health department as time goes on. As the, the, we can always lift yeah. at any time, anyway. Yeah. We know the fall of the year they're expecting to have a surge, so we'll see how this plays out. I know the state is um, getting all supplies for us for the election, which the governor is now at odds with the Secretary of State's and election division about whether or not um, the Public election will be normal or mail or whatever, but they've ordered us all supplies for our election workers. So it's like any masks and I'm understanding that it's masks, it's hand sanitizer, um, stuff like that, that they're they're trying to get as much as supplies and they'll have stuff for every town. Well, when I read in, I think it was bigger this morning, I think he softened his stance on that. The governor or the governor? He's not going to, uh, if the legislature, legislature has to put it in the law. If they decide to do that, he said he wouldn't stand in the way. Uh, I thought they had, and he just needed to do Maybe that was just for local, and maybe not for November. Right, I think it is. I know, I know that I worked on getting legislature passed for the village meeting that was supposed to take place. But that might have just been local elections that they were signing at that point. I don't like phone. Okay. Okay. All right. So on that motion to make masks mandatory until further notice when we open, is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> All right, next. Um, do we want to do the Mud City Loop covert now? Tyler, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me okay? Yes. How are you? Good. So we have the three bids in front of us. Do you have any comment about it? I do. Uh, first off, I just want to apologize uh, for uh, mis misunderstanding or not understanding the uh, start time for the meeting tonight. Yep. Uh, Dan, it was included in the uh, agenda that Dan sent me, and my apologies for the oversight. I assumed it was five o'clock like usual. So yep, no problem. Apologies. Uh, so yeah, so there, we got three bids in. We, I sent them out directly to Camp Precast, SD Ireland, and Concrete Systems Incorporated, uh, which is in New Hampshire. And so everybody got back to me last Friday. Concrete Systems was at 110,697. Yep. Camp was at 136.575. And SD Ireland was at 137,462. Uh, I should note that. SDR quotes uh, in an email, or was it like a formal quote? Um, so they were high, uh, and they also said that they would be able to do a late September, early October delivery um, at best. Um, camp, uh, I've been talking with Camp on the last couple of days, as recently as just a couple hours ago. Uh, they said they're looking at best a late August, early September delivery. And then Obviously, because of the low price, uh, it's pretty interesting. Concrete Systems, CSI, New Hampshire, um, and I had a lot of questions for them, just to iron out some details. And doing an apples apples comparison with the the camp uh, quote. Obviously, if you see camps, they have a lot of detail about things included, things not included, and I just wanted to make sure that CSI 
was including those things as well. And they seem to compare pretty well. Uh, the two things, one thing of concern and one thing that's very noteworthy, the time, the timeline that they stated that they could do this and it's, it's in two months or potentially even less. Um, so if we get a PO to them soon enough, they would take uh, two weeks to do shop drawings. Then I could review and approve those uh, quickly and get them back to them and then they could get uh, production going shortly thereafter. So all in all, it's going to be like just under two months to turn around if, if everything went uh, very smoothly. So that was that's obviously a very, very nice thing. And then the other uh, item that I've been dealing with in the last couple of days is regarding the wing walls. So the way the structure is designed, um, it's a 12 foot wide by nine and a half foot tall interior box culvert, 80, 80 feet long. Um, and, but what it does, it comes in pieces and you basically put the pieces together uh, to form one long box. And then on either end, but in, in the outside end, there's head wall and wing wall. And uh, typically what we're used to dealing with is these, these, head, these wing walls are basically just precast cantilever systems where they have um, basically a large flat bottom and then you know a, a wall going straight up and the connection of those two things and the weight upon them basically holds them in place via cantilever system. And you excavate out the area for these wing walls, you know, fill out a base, there's a footer, and you just put the wall down and you backfill. And it's pretty straightforward. And so what they were proposing is uh, this, this system called U walls. And these U walls are basically four by eight concrete panels that have uh, like monolithic stem anchor packs. And so they kind of click in place and they basically hold those panels in place. And then you have geo grid tie backs every two feet of lift. And so you lift and compact into the tie back. And so these, these panels um, just sit on top of each other and they're all tied back into the ground. And so uh, I did a lot of research on those. Um, they have a lot of documentation on them. They have a lot of experience using them. From you know, from what I can tell, from a design and structural standpoint, I, like I don't, I can't knock them. You know, obviously they've been used some much much larger projects than this. Uh, they've been used extensively, and they gave some references to a few projects in Vermont that they've been done. Uh, they don't have anything locally that I was that they mentioned, but there were some other projects in Vermont that they had done these in. Um, and they give a lot of detail and some pictures and stuff. So felt better about that and also talked to the their engineer uh, this afternoon to just learn more uh, about it. And again, felt you know felt a little better about it. Um, some of the things that I wanted to hear from them uh, and they confirmed was that the insulation doesn't really require more effort in some some instances it actually takes less effort uh, and less time than the actual precast wing walls that are typically used. Because uh, one of my biggest concerns was what happens if we get a contractor that doesn't know what they're doing with these things because they've never seen them before and what kind of problems does that cause? Uh, so that was good to hear that they are pretty straightforward in how they go in. They also confirmed that they would be providing a site a site tech from their company that would be on site for the first day of delivery uh, and installation of those U walls. So basically, they would be around and help the contractor, you know, with any specifics or you know, help kind of guide them and what they're doing with those with that installation. Um, and then lastly, I asked them for a revised price um, using just standard, regular, uh, typical precast walls. And the revised price doing that was 126,200. So even all things being equal with the other bids, uh, there's still you know ten thousand dollars lower than camp. So what's your, what's your uh, comfort level, Tyler, in using these uh, modular wing walls? Um, I, I got I got a lot better over the last couple of days. I have to I have to say that I think. The comfort level would, 
get to where it needs to be, maybe after a conversation with a with a contractor or two. Um, my my next thought was to have an informal conversation with with a couple of contractors that you know that are of a you know pedigree grade that could handle something like this, and kind of getting their take on it. You know, and if, and if if their reaction you know resembled a horror story, then that would be pretty scary. Uh, but if they said, yeah, no, we've seen them, we've done, or maybe they even have dealt with them in the past, or at the very least, they said, yeah, you know, that's something we could handle. Doesn't seem like a lot of, you know, doesn't seem like a huge undertaking. Then that would be pretty comforting. Buck Reed, have you heard of those before? Modular wing walls? Yeah. They go together a lot quicker. They snap together. Do we have three bids here, or just this? There's three bids. I think camp, I think two CSIs, I think. And then SD Ireland, SD Ireland page in the back. SD Ireland is just an email. It sounds to me if uh, everything is the same, apples to apples, even with the traditional type of wing wall, we're going to be 10,000 left dealing with a CSI versus camp or um, SD Ireland. I'm wondering if we could we could work with, say we choose SD SCI or CSI to work with regardless and then talk to contractors about their comfort level and using their wing wall, the, the new modular ones. If not, if we don't, we could do the traditional wing wall with CSI. Right. I, I'm having a hard time, you know, not agreeing with that. Um, you know, we, we know camp recaps. We know where they are. You know, we've done a lot of work with them. A lot of contractors out here work with them every day. Uh, they do. They, they produce quality products. They're easy to work with. You know, they contractors like them, um, and that's you know sometimes it's hard to put a dollar a dollar value on that. You know, right. you like to keep things local too, but um, at this at this dollar difference, it's it's hard to hard to not say yes to CSI. Gary, you're well, CS, CSI is right? a really reputable company. I've used them in the past for yeah, manholes yeah. and oh. Most anything uh, free cast. They've been in business for, well, I don't know how long, a, lot, a number of years. And uh, I, if I had anything to do with it, I wouldn't be worried about it. Um, yeah. Even doing the modular ones? Doing the modular ones. Yeah. I mean, if you don't, if you don't do one, you're never going to get familiar with it. Um, and things. You know, all across the industry, change daily. You know, on, on yeah. ways to do things and improvements, and be able to do them quicker and cheaper and easier. I, I certainly wouldn't be afraid to go with the modular. Thing. So the cost of the modular being less, but how about the installation? Will the modular oh, system what, create a more expensive? Uh, that's what Tyler said that they were. There was less. Could be less work. Yeah, my, my, I mean, my gut reaction, thinking about the way that you're going to put in a free cast wing wall versus the way you're going to put these panels together is that it would, it would take more work by the contractor. Um, the guy, the, the, the guy at CSI that I talked to said that's not the case. So maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but, um, you know, if it's, 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 it's certainly not going to be, it doesn't seem like it's going to be, you know, Twenty-six thousand dollars more expensive, uh, and the way the way that we can handle this is knowing that we have a price for the typical wing balls. You know, maybe uh, maybe we'll talk to a couple contractors informally and just kind of get a feel for it. And if we still feel uncomfortable about it, uh, we could always uh, do the bid for the for the site work in a way that. Provides a couple of different prices, maybe one for doing U wall installation and one for doing typical wing wall installation, and see what the contractors say as far as the price difference goes. And maybe that's the that's the difference maker in our decision. But I my right now my 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 estimate my estimate is that you know you talk to next year, uh sixteen thousand dollars for the typical wing walls. You know the price difference between their bids. I I don't think that it's Sixteen thousand dollars worth of extra site work to put those U walls in. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that it would be. That's a lot of money, uh, and I don't. I don't see being that much more work. 
you said they I, have, I, I have I have this guy from CSI on record saying that there, is, there isn't any more work. And you did say that they're going to support a supplier rep to help the contractor. At the Correct. Company. Yeah, he said he said it to me on the phone, and I put it into an email to them uh, after the phone call that they would provide a site tech on site for the first day um, of the delivery and installation of the e walls. In addition. Uh, to providing a site tech that would be there for the first day of delivery for the for the box culverts, right. which is what everybody does. You know, they always have a, a yeah, camp would have a site tech on site for the first day. Yeah, it's a pretty standard operation. Sorry, what was the frame time frame again? Uh, it boiled down to, to about two months. For CSI, like was that the end of August? Yeah, he said it would take them two to three weeks uh, for to get their shop drawings ready, and then I would have to review and approve those shop drawings, um, and then two weeks for fabrication and two weeks to produce. So three weeks plus two weeks plus two weeks. I just rounded up to call it two months, and that's from that's from as soon as we get them the PO. You guys think July first of August, basically? Yeah, I like the That's short, more. shorter yeah. timeline. I a pretty bad Camp. Yeah. Camp was one thirty-six. One thirty-six and SDR Island. One sixty-seven. Uh, one forty-seven. Oh, one forty-seven. Quite a bit difference. One ten, one thirty-six, or one forty-seven. Yeah. Are there any restrictions with the governor with how uh, they? Work or is that like essential? That's essential. Yeah. But they were not on the television. They were talking about it. Some part of the state of New York company was in doing some road work on Route 11 for that. They're doing their interstate. Colchester down in front of Fairfax. And once they got it all paved over there, all up for two years, they've gone down to Culver's and failed. So they're right back in there. I look at them being there forever. Tyler, is there any issue with, um, I mentioned this in an email, a company installing and another company making with a warranty or guarantee or whatever comes along with that? That's normal. Mm -hmm. That's the same, same company. Same company installing and making it? Well, the same company is going to provide the site tag. Right. I just didn't know down the road if there's a no. failure. Does it, are there two, one group blaming the other? One's making it, one's installing it. Not the same group. Does that make any sense? It would depend on the failure. If yeah, whether it was a material failure or a design failure, or if it was a failure of the installer having done it incorrectly, and it would all depend on what failed. So it would be determined by an engineer and a uh, group of lawyers. That's, <laughs> that's Tyler's job to inspect it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you're gonna rub it in the big bucks. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> Uh, you know, if you look at that, if you look at that proposal from both CSI and from Camp, you know, there's conversations there about uh, damage claims and warranties and those good things. So basically, if if there's a defect, <coughs> uh, if there's a defect from production, it needs to be and that it's noticed. It needs to be noticed immediately. So it'd be uh, it would behoove us. You know, and I can, something I could do is I would just deliver it due to inspection, but also the contractor should inspect it. I mean, the only difference here, uh, what typically happens where the contractor is buying the, the box versus the town buying the box is that uh, if it is a if it is a material issue, you know, upon delivery or a material issue, you know, five years from now, uh, we're going to you know we're going to have to deal with it directly with the producer. Um, if it's an installation issue. Or they did a poor job of, it, of installing it. That we're dealing with the contractor. But either way, there should be either way. There's warranty against it. And we in our bid with the site contractor. That's that's going to be pretty 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 well defined in the agreement with them. All right, Tyler. Do you have anything to add? No, I think I've I think I've pretty much uh, provided all the information that I can at this point. Okay. I hear motion. I make a motion that we approve the bid 
for the Fox Cover and Wing Walls from uh, Concrete Systems Incorporated at a cost of $110,697. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. Thank you, Tyler. Thank you. Thank you very much. And again, my apologies for uh, not being there. For hey, no worries. It worked. That's just all right. Well. We're at our limit for people in the room. Anyway. Yeah, you couldn't come in the room anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Put you in the hallway, Tyler. <laughs> Thank you. I wish I had a good excuse. Could have been my fault, Tyler. I kind of went around, but I kind of went into the Gulf Road. Thanks, Tyler. I, I was thinking about Gulf Road. I was. That, that'll be down the road too. I like that idea. No, you won't. I think this is last and mocked up. All right. One thing we're out, I got to ask the guy that are good at talking about, they got so goddamn much work. And they they control what they get done. Right. I'm not a job, though. You know, you're not a manager, but you ain't going to do nothing until they're in Right. And unless I help them, too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's move to discuss property tax due date, interest, and penalties. So, Dan, you want to go over? I know. Well. Well, we know that uh, the, both the Senate and House have approved this bill, allowing us to make changes if we want. The governor has not assigned it. Um, signed it. Has not signed it. So. Doesn't he have a certain amount of time he has to sign it by, though? Yeah, he does. Is it 10 days or something like that? Yeah, it's 10 or 14 days. Yeah. I don't remember what it is. So. It's going to be soon. Either he signs it or vetoes it or it becomes law without his signature. I think the last air check is on the desk, yeah. Well, I looked, yeah. I was looking up right before I came online, maybe you know Gary more than I do, how to do it online, the status, and it just, it hadn't said anything about the governor yet. It only said House, House in the House, and the um, Senate, I mean, and I think that was May first. Yeah, I know he has a window of time, and he has to wait. Wait, 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 well, the past, the past, but the governor has to, like, put it in order. Well, like Gary said, if he does, it does or not. No, he's got three options. He can either sign it, he can veto it, or he can let it pass without his signature. Yeah, I haven't heard. And it has to be done within a time limit. I was thinking it was either 10 or 14 days. I thought it was 10 days, yeah. So we're about there, but it might be even time-wise we're not totally we're close. It depends on when it got sent to his desk, too. Right. So they might have passed it, but it didn't right. come by and not have sent it to his desk yet. So yeah, I emailed him again to Westman again today. So so Stell was able to. It's what I get called about all, all the time. I spend most of my day answering that question, um, and especially because Stell changed their deadline. So Stell is governed by a charter. So they have a different form of government than we do. So and they have a town administrator. So they're a uh, and manager. Their um their charter allows the select board, no, probably the town manager to set the deadline. It has to be four equal installments and the penalty has to be a certain way and the interest has to be calculated a certain way. But the manager can control when those states are. That's why they can move it. Right. We have a traditional form of government where, for the checks and balance, does not giving you guys too much power or giving me too much power. The citizens vote on those deadlines and the penalty and interest at town meeting. And so it can't be changed unless the voters petition and we have a town meeting to change it. But we yeah, meeting and change it. So we're kind of, we can discuss it, but I thought the governor might have done something one way or another by now. 
my feeling is that we should keep the due date the same, but then waive any penalties or fees. It's going to be due at some point anyway, whether it's 30 days or 60 days, kicking the can down the road, and it's going to be due. And then November is going to be due. And, and if we if we keep the due date the same but waive the delinquent, then it's going to help people just as much. You know, they pay them when they can. Can we waive the delinquent later? I mean, at the moment you can't. At the moment we can have a discussion, but we can't do or vote on anything. We have no. Right, but we can no say. You know, this is actually we're going to do. You know, when he makes that decision. You guys ask. You guys say what you're going to charge for it without the state. The voters do. The voters that's do. Yeah. Me. Yeah. We don't. Oh yeah. Well, that's 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 that we leave together. We know where it is. Right. You're right. You're exactly right. I know where it is. I don't want yeah. To Every year, I I think that it. people don't understand what they're voting on. They don't. Next year, I'll be able to figure it out. You'll be screaming at Buckley. <laughs> well, I've been had a lot of people call me. <laughs> me too. I'm going to have the money. I'm going to tell you right now. And I'm going to protect them. I have just call you guys, but they don't know how to talk to you. Right. Um, and I can talk to you like I can talk to anybody else. If you don't like it, shove it. <laughs> but, the, but the problem is, is that we have to pay a certain amount into the state for the school. We haven't got it. We haven't got it. Well, I know, but we have to pay. We have to get a loan to pay it. If we don't. Yeah. But then it costs us money. Yeah. Well, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. Well, that's the thing. 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 That's the uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. That's what I thought. Uh, I don't know exactly right now. I, we don't have much in the I mean, like less than ten thousand dollars for taxes right now. Yes, it's true. Yeah. Sarah does a good job. I think you're gonna have more this year. You you probably right. are right. Right. This year. Right. Right. You haven't got anybody doing anything for the best They're still home because they're getting a loan of a thousand fifty dollars a week. Yeah. People are calling me. They call me at home all the time saying, "Are you gonna change that date or what?" First off, I'd say we don't have the power to do it. Like the governor says. The thing is, the governor is not telling the truth that way because I know a lot of folks I've talked to, they haven't got a goddamn bank on unemployment. We can't get online. Well, they got all these people in Maryland, all these companies are feeding them, and nobody gets a dime. So where is the money going? My husband was on unemployment. He's been on for seven weeks. He just got checked today. I haven't got anything, period. You have to, you call and You're they well up. Online. Yeah, right. I haven't got anything. No, I get no stimulus. Zero. I haven't got anything. They say you won't be able to get anyway. I'm breaking it. I got no unemployment, no stimulus. No, I got to pay the taxes. So the legislation, as I understand it, is only good to the 31st of December. Any changes we make will only be made from now until the 31st of December. Right. That's what I read. Yeah. And just throwing this out there for a moment to discuss the meeting, but. We have two tax payments within that time frame, right? November is the next one. Mm -hmm. So my thought process has been the same as you. We leave the due dates the same, but we allow a 90-day window without penalty. I'm just throwing ideas out there. I don't have any partner on what we said, but 90 days beyond the actual due date, no penalty. Once you go beyond the 90 days, then the penalty percentage begins to apply. We don't back it up to the original budget. Can we do that? Um, only if the governor, only if the law passes. Understood. We're right. We're complaining about that. The governor's so fine. Just to be very clear, your language, you're saying penalty. What about interest? I think penalty is eight percent. Penalty never applies in November anyway. Mm -hmm. Penalty is only always the May. May. Like May. Yep. May. Only May. Change it. I would, I would be comfortable saying penalty and interest. I think both. We're we're building our our budgets on tax dollars paid on time, not on the interest they would accrue if they're late. We don't plan on that. We can't budget for that. Right. We don't know what it is. So if we waive the penalties for both, then I don't see us being out any money. We're still going to look for the principal balance being paid on their taxes. The only the only thing. That I have against that. I don't mind waiving the penalty, but the interest, you've got to have a carrot out there. It doesn't give anybody any incentive to pay it at all until that 90 days is up. 
because we do have a lot of our, we schedule a lot of our payments due in November and May based on the fact that people are going to pay their taxes. So we have loans coming due. And I have to pay the school $4 million right. based on the wow. money. Well, we have collect all property taxes and then we have to pay the school in June. Yeah. And they are not letting us pay them late. I have 20 days. There I go ahead. It doesn't matter. We still have to pay the school. Yeah, that's what I'm talking and, about. And, and if not, then there's been, my understanding is an 8% penalty if I'm late paying the school there. See, I, I want to lobby to get all the towns, talk to our fellow select boards, and go to the state and say, look, you bill for the for the school separately. The town, we send out tax bills, that's what people pay. So there's two tax bills, because we get hung for the school side. Everyone thinks it's big, big tax. 85% is the school, 15% is the municipal side. There should be two bills. And I bet if we got together with select boards, we could make that happen. We could, that's the way it should be. I've always thought that. It just seems like the, the towns get blamed. You know, those are the ones passing laws down there or how they want to run. Yeah. Don't, our face. Don't you agree with that, Gary? Oh, yeah. No question about it. You know, I know when I was down there, the representative from St. John's Bay had a perfect setup. To pay. That thing is so hard to understand. That's the problem. I, I couldn't even begin to comprehend what they're talking about. And, then, and they had a special session on the House floor. And all the people that had anything to do with school taxes, school budget, up in the front, and legislators could ask them questions. I'll bet you they didn't answer five questions out of the whole day. They had, they'd have to check into it. They didn't, and they don't understand it themselves. But the thing is so convoluted and so complicated. And then you have the yeah. um, prepaid, the state payment, the income right. sensitivity. It's not public knowledge, so then when realtors are trying to close on a house, you're not allowed to tell them what the seller yeah. made for money, but then you're trying to collect money. I'm like, well, I can't tell you how much you owe, but I need, I need you to pay me. Right. But it's, right. It's, it's, it's not public knowledge. Give me a blank check, and I'll let you know how much it is. I'm like, if you tell me the magic yeah. words, then I can tell you how much it's due. It's crazy. I don't know where they don't do anything. But anyway, let's, let's talk about the issue at hand. So I, I'm, my, my point is, if folks are going to be late for this payment that's due here in a couple of days, right. it's probably going to make them late for the November bill as well. So that's why I wanted to add the waiving of the penalty. I'm good with leaving the interest where it is, Gary, I understand. I mean, the interest on it, but it's 1%, right? Yeah, it's 1% for the first three months, and then one and a half after the right. Well, I'm, I'm good with leaving the interest in place until we remove the penalty if it's paid within 90 days of the due date. I just think it's a goodwill, goodwill to offer people no payment or interest or penalty during the difficult time. We're not going to make that. We're not going to make that much by charging the interest. Is there you know. is there a um, cost to you time or or whatever because of a delay? Is there more of a cost to the town, you know, staff wise? You know what I'm saying? No. You mean, does it cost any more staff time if we decided not to charge the penalty for the 90 days? Right. I don't know if it's a programming thing or. No, but so I'm trying to think of all my questions. So, say I don't have any clear indication from the governor by May 15th. So, I, when I cash up, and I balance the books on May 15th. I charge kind of penalty and interest to all the outstanding accounts before I leave that night. I'm just trying to figure out, can you reverse it? Do I reverse everybody's not? Like, that's my only. That's gotta be made by then because he, it was passed by the Senate House before the 1st of May. So it's gotta be, I thought it was 10 days. It could be 14, but even so, it's going to be decided before that. Could you hold off charging the penalty at all for like five days after the due date? I just see what the governor would say. say. Yes, I can. It's very hard. So, because people want answers. It's kind of like going back to rest. People need to know. Like, I do. My, 
part of the known or am I not part of the known? Um, right now, one of the, the only thing that we've been giving guidance so far is the LDC, a, the Board of Abatement can see case by case scenarios or right. some there's the equity and the equality of if it's just going to be the people that ask or is it? Most people won't do that. They won't. You know, I just think it's goodwill effort. It's a difficult time right now. We have penalties and interest. If people understand that, and we're not going to make a fortune by charging the interest, it's just a thorn in the side. You know, do away with all of it for, I was going to say, till the COVID is lifted, you know, and that may be more than 90 days, but we've got back to back May and then November anyway, so. So it, it, it almost seems like because the government has decided clearly that we, we need to leave two separate contingency plans in place yeah. before we leave tonight. Otherwise, we're going to have to have an emergency phone meeting or something in order to make it. Two more in a special meeting. Today's the 12th, right? Yeah, we got it's Friday. We're talking Friday. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, that's. that's yeah, let's do it. Let's and the, the other thing with the interest, the interest, the penalty is very black and white. It's only on the May installment. It's 80%, either you paid or you didn't one time, that's it. The interest is per month and it's based on the balance. So I charge, I've been charged, not everybody's paid up November. So are we, if we do away the interest, are we just doing it away for the second installment, a whole year? For the main, just for the main. Um, that's so a little bit. Yeah, we're going back into another. We may. And we can make a decision. We'll all be out of Right. So we right. just deal with the way right now. No, I'm talking last November. And I'm also talking delinquent taxes. Like. No. You mean you're talking about delinquent taxes from November 19th? Um, okay, yeah. Well, okay. Have, I, I charge now. interest to any balance. So. That's right. Well, I. Personally, I, I think it's simply it's just for this current payment due, and we can deal with the November payment. What we can see how this goes, and then right, yeah. Yeah. right. Yeah. So, yeah. I just want to make sure that there's a more responsibility on you, whatever decision we're making. More, more work for you. I think as long as a clearly decided decision is made. Right. As long as it's done properly the first time, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, oh, we should have done this or that. Let me go with Eric's suggestion, no penalty, no interest for the May installment. For 90 days. For 90 days. I agree with that. Because we can always we can always change that too if that if we find out it's going to be Well, I tell you what. It's so okay without the interest people that don't have money are going to have. That's right. So you're you're just you're batting against the wall. You're just still gonna have to link to people a lot of them, I think. A lot of these cries are dumb. Yeah, well I know and like you said, people don't have money. There's a single they parent or elderly, for they don't have people. money. I think if we can ease the pain for them at all, we should do it. That's why I don't want to mess with them. I'm sure I can probably fix something, but I can fix some of mine. <laughs> so no matter what we do, we're not gonna fix every citizen's issue. We're trying to do the best we can for the mass. Every town. And the part of the legislation that is unpopular on the Republican side of the house is this is pitting our own community against its board rather than the state owning the responsibility for it. So the state saying we are waiving. We are they're they're giving us the authority to do it, but they're not taking responsibility. That's right. And that's that's where some of the controversy in this legislation has come up. But uh, you know, I don't care. I mean, they, they vote elect us in here, and we got broad shoulders, and we take the heat in our right comes from. We're not going to fix everybody. I will tell you this. The folks that are able to draw unemployment currently, some of them are not going back to work because they're making more money. Yeah. Oh, I know. So, and I, I'm not blanket that on anybody, there's, there's, but there are cases like this out there. So, I will be interested to see how many delinquent tax payments we actually have. Um, so when I look Thursday or Friday when I catch up, we were only about 
500,000 less in collecting than the year before, which sounds like a lot. It's really not a lot. No, Maybe not seven million dollars. Yeah, over six million dollars your treasury. So, what? How many people are thinking like how many households? Like that? But I, I have hundreds of payments on my desk because um, I'm down a staff member. Missy and I are trying to rotate not being in the office at the same time. So, um, I, I have a lot of money on my desk that I'm trying to process through now. All the escrow companies have paid me. Which is a couple million dollars. I just did all the direct um, debits where people, where I go in and I automatically withdraw, and that's half a million dollars. So a lot is a lot is still coming in. The most of it. Corporations will pay you probably half. I'm yeah. talking about the common person. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And that's that's a big blow up the shoulder of the common person. I got a facial. Yeah. Yeah. That's two. They call me all the time. That's two. They're all our neighbors. And I will admit, if somebody complains, I had a woman screaming at me by the end of the conversation. I was sobbing on the phone with her. She was consoling me because I told her I couldn't miss the date. Mm -hmm. I, oh, I know. That horrible. I just sat on the phone and talked with her. People don't understand why we can't change it. They think it's crazy. Well, we have to pay the school regardless. I know. I mean, we might have to take out a humongous loan that's going to pay the school. That's why I want that changed. There's no reason for that. They write the rules that they want us to pay. So, you guys, what do you want to do? Make your motion. I, I'm willing to make a motion on a contingency. Yeah. If the governor signs this legislation, so my motion is this if the governor signs the legislation, or if it passes on its own, because it okay. passes on its own, correct? Right? Uh, that we waive penalties and interest for 90 days past the due date. For the May payment. The May payment only. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? Just make sure that you know, the motion should say May 15th, May 15th, 2020. Okay. We just, yeah, just, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you want to make yeah. sure for something like this. So that, Not broad. <laughs> yeah. So Sarah has the right worries for what she. You're writing that down, Tina? Yeah, well, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> As long as that bill passes, as long as it gets yeah. turns into law. As long as the bill becomes law. So just right. logistics, because I mean, I can hear my phone ringing here. As long as the bill becomes law. The yeah. deadline is still yeah. May 15th yeah. 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 at the moment. Mm -hmm. unless, um, gone. And if nothing is here. decided by May 15th, I'm billing penalty and interest. If it is decided after that, I am going back and I'm removing all that penalty and interest. And yes. if those people have paid me, then it can be a credit towards November. Yeah. And or we're writing refund checks. That's where I guess I think it's well, the hard part. I would I I think what my understanding is no penalty at all, interest or penalty. Um, even if the governor doesn't sign. You don't have the authority until you can't do it. Right. You don't have the authority to have the conversation because of legislation. Right. If it passes, we can do that. And if it doesn't, we can't. So we need a charter. Kind of short on time. I'm going to call yeah. Dave, yeah. Dave yeah. Acaboni when I get out of here. We should have done May 1st. Legislation doesn't come out. I've been oh. working on this with Dave Acaboni since March. Yeah. 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 Well, that's what they do that. I'll call, Dave. I'll call Dave when we get out of here. Because I've been talking to him too. Maybe the meeting has a discretion as they call it. They have a discretion. But I think not now. No, it's past the Senate and the House. It's up to the governor. Yeah. And like, I know Gary's right. It passes on its own. The question hasn't been answered. So that means if it, if it doesn't pass, you still have to do the test. Yeah. It's a normal. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing we can do. You hold it past that one. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I like that one. We can, like you had said something though. If if interest and penalties have to be charged, can we rebate? Or 
or you know, or can't we put it on to like not a rebate for the credit? Credit, credit. Yeah, credit. yeah, but they've already paid because that happens, there's going to be that. So yeah. we have that option only if this passes through the governor. Right. If it doesn't pass, you don't, don't have to answer right. that. You can't do it. Right. Yeah. Is that we're gonna find out. We're gonna get the pen out tomorrow morning. The, the, the last time I talked today, he didn't think that there was going to be a decision before our deadline. But, but it has. There's a window. I'll ask him about that window. Yeah, there is a window. But you got to remember, if there's a difference between the two bills, between the Senate and the House, it right. has to go to conference committee. Yeah. And I don't know I think it has if there's a difference, and then it has to get hashed out, and it might say conference committee. Regardless. I know there is a lot of debate, like. They were hearing from the citizens that they didn't have money. They were very fearful of the fact that if we extend it too far, the trip, trickle down effect, then they don't have the money for November. And then, um, like, is that helping or not helping? And then the, the education, you know, they need the money. They're already saying that tax rates are going to be out of control next year because of the school yeah. and the deficit. And it is. Yeah, the big, the big thing that really hurts towns isn't it the actual tax or stuff, it's collecting that. I mean, you know, or even if we had borrowed the money to the tiger supper, it wouldn't be that long. I and mean, we could survive on the reserve if we needed to. Right. But it's paying the state. Tax. Yeah, paying the state for the school. Yes, that's the other thing that really. But we could get a loan if we need to do that. We can. Oh, well, sure. You know, we could we could walk out of the union bank. I'm sure we could walk Right. Well, well, we're also going to be taking out a huge loan July 1st for our CD arbitrage, borrowing in anticipation of property tax. So hopefully we don't have two lo huge loans sitting out there because we opened the school and now we have to look, borrow to be able to until taxes come. Yeah. I, I, well, this week, we'll Everybody's in the same on, on, on the next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. I, know, I, think, uh, I know, I've been asked a lot. That you guys might be asked a lot of it. We're on vacation. Yeah. So that's, yeah. And then the other thing, like, further down the road, we can have the discussion, but we're pretty uh, tight with our tax sales. We're, we're like, you know, you don't pay and you get three months and then we turn everything over for collection. We might want to look at our, yeah. how strict our policy is. We can take a look at that. Yeah. So is there any more discussion on this motion? Was it second? Do we get? Okay. Yes. All in favor say aye. What was the motion again? <laughs> the motion was if the legislation passed into law, we would waive both penalties and interest for 90, for 90 days. days on the May 15th payment order. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. We'll do what we can. All right, next. Extend the time frame for the DRB decisions. <laughs> Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Sarah. I don't know why they, they waited so long and we didn't even talk about it. I know, we've been talking about it for a month. <laughs> More than a month. I emailed Dave, I think, more than a month ago about it. I saw his letter in the paper, taxes going up to $4,000, that was very strict about Yeah, oh, I know. He can get time to put that in there. Hey, Todd. Good afternoon, everyone. So, extend time frame for DRB decisions. Yeah, this is one of the uh, opportunities that the select board has to uh, deal with current coronavirus issues. So, this will be the select board for. I don't need a rezoning. I'm still processing permits daily. I just approved the housing garage and shed. We got the to the parking lot. So not too shabby. Uh, this is the DRB does need this for a couple applications. So Gary can explain as well too. So I would recommend you adopt this. Talking to the Secretary of State's office, they said other towns the GA has done this. I don't think I really got that kind of juice, but I think the select board. Gary, what do you think about it? Well. As we know, I mean, if somebody applies, we got so many days to act on it, and we're running up against the deadline on 
at least two. Great, yeah, three now. One's kind of half, one's a little right there. Yeah, yeah. we're going to work on that one. But, uh, yeah, but not being, it's tough to do some of the, make some of these decisions by not being able to meet personally. And I mean, it just is, you can't do it on Zoom. Especially complex site plans. Um, it's hard to do complex site plans electronically. We are going to have a site walk tomorrow night on a project. But uh, yeah, we need to extend the, extend the date by 90 days. We got 45 days to make a decision. We need to extend that by 90, uh, no, 90 days to 45. Is that enough? Should do it. Add no. 90 to the 45? Add 90 to the 45. That's all we can do. We can't do anymore. We can't go any further. That's the legislature does not yeah. <clears throat> Seems like we're waiting on the legislature to do a lot of things. Yeah. yeah. And we have the authority to do this. You do. Yeah. Yeah, Todd checked with the secretary. Right, it's getting bigger. It's getting bigger and more so. The what? The project getting bigger by the day and longer. Um, I don't know if they're any bigger, but they're more complicated. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the electronic meeting is tough. Like tomorrow's project is 54 townhouses. And um, maybe the board's going to vote tomorrow night. Um, we're going to do it in person, hopefully. I've got some members want to do electronically. This just gives the board a little more leeway. If the, to be clear, though, if I don't ask within 30 days of receiving an application or if I defer to the board and they don't ask in 45 days, the team's approved. So basically, the builder can do wherever he wants without any town control. So this just gives us the ability to have more town control over projects for a longer time period. These are all big state townhouses. No, these are all these are all big money, high rent. You can't afford about three towns. You're gonna have to avoid your vacation. Any way to get in here, it would. Now everything that's been built in town is all market rate. The only thing recently that's not market rate. Was the uh, Hutchinson Street project? And I don't know if it's for it. So I think it's market rate. It was just delivered to the governor right now. Okay. All right. Oh. Great. He's listening. He's got 10 years. Then he's got 10 or 12 or 15 days. To... Yeah, but he's got to go home by five and it's overtime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but he's still got, from the time it's delivered to his desk, he's still got the 10 or 12 or 14 days, whatever it is, to sign it. Might have time. Yeah. All right. Do I hear a motion about this? Make a motion we extend the DRB time to make decisions by 90 days. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Is that just for this period of time, or we, is this going to be a permanent change here? No, this is just part of the coronavirus legislation. It's just while there's a state of emergency for okay. okay. So it's a one time. One time thing. Yeah. Until further um, notice. Yeah, once it's over, I, I, this 90 days goes away. So. Once, so, once the board's convened regularly, you know, where there's not any <coughs> restrictions for the any people when those plans come off. We can rescind the extension. So, yeah. team, you can include that language in that. I already know. Thank yeah. you. Like, Good. For, for example, the tomorrow night DRB meeting, the 54 time out, I know there'll be 10 people left in the room. So, we're going to proceed with an first meeting. In my May 27th meeting, there'd be 50 people in the room. We can't hold that here. We're gonna have to do something electronic here, hybrid. I'm not sure we'll see what the governor says by then, but some stuff we can do here. So it's one project tomorrow night, but the future now is no chance under current situation we do that here. Where is this located? Which one? Tomorrow night? 54. Uh, Bridge Street, behind Bridge Street. kind of uh, northwest of Fred's Energy, between Fred's Energy, like the back trees, all the way between the rail trail and the river. So the old body shop. Yeah, oh. no. No, it's behind the right. Yeah, yeah. 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 Fred King. Everything yeah. behind North River Street Rail Trail to the river. So the other half of the the other half of the development that was cut off by the by the bypass. Yeah. Other half of the which is better. Same developer. All right. All in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion is passed. <clears throat> Next, review and approve the road boring on Olive Street. So my bypass.
water and very narrow right away all of the elevation. Before they start boring, I want to make sure they understand the complications the things that are going on in that period. The other thing may be is since it's a 33 foot wide right away, they may not be able to do it all in a right away. They may have to have permission from landowners to go in there for a while. Why are they doing it over there? If somebody working for it gets a Comcast TV. So, but I, you know, I don't want them to call over morning so they come on site and, and met with this and Doug and, and hopefully Johnny so that they understand how complicated it is going to be for there because the stormwater, I mean, we, we, when we did that project, when the stormwater is there, we had to find that and there's water and sewer, there's just a bunch of stuff going on in very, very little area there. How about notifying? How about notifying John from? Yeah, we've already done that. We'll yeah. make sure when they come up, they can meet with them. But I don't want them just going out there without actually coming and looking at these with our guys before they start doing something. Well, I mean, all we can do is approve them to do this within the right of way. Correct. Yep. Yeah. They go outside the right of way. They're going to deal with. Exactly. I want to make sure they're on site that they understand that. So far, we have an app for somebody to come up and look at it before they do it. You know, so they, they know. I just want to want contingent. I'm not signing this until somebody comes up and meets us on site and take a look at it. Okay. And I talked to the guy personally about it. I didn't have problems doing it. Just trying to hurt all the kids together. And I want to do once come up and do it. When you get started, they do it safely. Great. Uh, because when I first went, I didn't know when we start meeting again. So I'm trying to get you caught up on some things too. But I can help you. This is just a one residence hookup? Or is this the whole street? Uh, it's just a one residence. It's, it's 26 on the street, I think, with 21. Okay, do I have a motion? I'm just wondering if there's any way we can make it so that anybody else wants to hook up down the road through. You know, I, they're bored. I don't see that. You know, they're just trying to get. Under the street. I don't know why they're even not even going overhead or something like this. I don't know. Here's why I want them to come up and be able to speak to the floor. I'm making it out very quick. Come on. Yeah. Okay. Hey, can you give them a picture? So, here, motion regarding this? I make a motion that we approve the uh, permit for boring rain, Paula Street. Continued upon that meeting with the uh, village forum and a village what is title. Crew leader. Crew leader. Crew leader. Crew leader. Um, water life department. In the water life. Do I have a second? Second. Any further discussion? I, I would add that this is only within the town's right. Only within the town's right. Yeah. So there's one down there. Yeah. I'll call it and he's all here. I'll take it. All right. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion is passed. Review and approve the lease for police department vehicle, Richard. We have it in front of us. You did? Uh, yeah, I did a written proposal for you there, but it's basically a very accessible kind of thing. Yep. Uh, we ended up paying for the last time. And uh, he has his two right now. Uh, like the same arrangements with hardware and electronics that were long ago. It's done in the last four crews, I think, three or four. So, uh, what they set up the finance was a little different than the last one. So, the public first national. He had a lot of documentation for that. So, I uh, request for approval to enter into a lease purchase. This was in the budget anyway. It was. Is there EQ coming out? We're going to run it. This was Jason's old EQ history. Yeah. And his cruiser has got uh, 
still got a little life in it. We'll try to run it through the rest of the summer. Go from there with it. So we may need it for next year. But good luck. We didn't have it put on the road in the last few months. So. Do I hear a motion? Make a motion to approve. The dollar amount. Is there any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? So pass. Next, old business. Change the road name of Rue Benoit to Rue Benoit Road. This is really just an administrative thing because I don't want people like to see road, lane, something at the end of the What does the word rule mean in French? Road. 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 I didn't realize that he wasn't going to be able to do it. I don't think 
day, another dollar. Yeah. yeah. Pay a dollar a day. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. You're going to let us know on the paper, huh? Or I'll put it on the news. Yeah. Yeah, we'll let you know. Yeah, I bet. I'm all right by the radio. Hey, guys. See you later. Yeah. Hey, Dan, you still there? Dan, yeah, he's here. Yeah. yeah, hey, Dan, it's Bill. I, I got on late, but I was on the call. Uh, if somebody just needs to note that in a minute. Okay, thank you. Okay, bye, thanks. Bye-bye. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, bye now.